So good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whenever, wherever you are watching this. I am the C-H-A-L-L and today, Chell Chats, the FA Cup. Tottenham Hotspur, one, Burnley, nil. Uh, we're going to be looking through this game. Um, I mean, purely and simply, Spurs lacked final third quality and it took a moment of brilliance uh, with about 10 minutes to go to take them through to round four with, of course, Fulham, who won 1-0 against Rotherham United this evening. And, of course, Brentford and Wolves will go to a replay at Molyneux after a 1-1 draw. And if you didn't see it yesterday, Crystal Palace and Everton will go to a replay at Goodison Park after a controversial Calvert-Lewin red card. Spoiler alert, wasn't a red card in a million years. Um... So that one will go to a replay as well. Now, of course, we did say we were going to review that one in the January schedule on social media, but I fell ill yesterday, so unfortunately, uh, couldn't really review that one, uh, unfortunately. But I am feeling better today. Uh, just going to plough through this one. Uh, big thank you to Rich from Eagle Eyed Football for previewing yesterday's game. Uh, we'll try and get an Everton fan on to preview the replay. So any Everton fans or content creators, Drop me a message in the socials below. So let's get straight into this then. Spurs go through to round four with a 1-0 win over Burnley. Um, was it the game it was supposed to be on paper? Spurs, league-wise, they're in the sort of top half at the moment. They're in around the top six. Um, it's Burnley fighting for relegation, at the bottom of the league still. Is it the game it was supposed to be on paper? No, it wasn't. Um, Spurs lacked a real quality of final third. And I feel like Richarlison is being made use as a um, square peg round hole striker at times. It, it kind of felt like that. It kind of felt like Richarlison wasn't the main man up front, even though he was. It kind of didn't feel like that. Um, don't get me wrong. I love watching Postacoglu football. I love watching Andrews football. Um, I think it's exciting to watch. But it becomes less exciting when you haven't got that edge in the final third. And this is what Spurs need to look for going forward. A clinical striker. Someone to finally be the man that replaces the outgoing summer transfer of Harry Kane. Someone to fill Harry Kane's role. I don't think Spurs have invested in that yet. They've got a 19, 20-year-old from Argentina, but I don't think he's the answer now. I think he's the, the long-term solution to build up towards, but you need someone now. Um, and the evidence was clear tonight. It took one moment of brilliance from Pedro Porro, who had a fantastic game for Tottenham, by the way, to break that. Now, first of all, I want to give credit to Burnley. If they defend like they defended today against some of Spurs' chances, they will be absolutely fine. Um, three players in particular, you see it uh, in the top left corner. Uh, Dara O'Shea, Josh Cullen in the midfield and uh, Murich in goal. I thought Murich had a solid game. Uh, we couldn't really stop that strike in the second half with 10 minutes to go from Pedro Porro. I think that was an unstoppable strike. Um, should it have really thrown out to that position in the first place? Probably not. Um, for me, I f it, it felt like he kind of played himself into that situation in a way. I mean, when you look at Josh Cullen in the midfield, drove everything quite well. Um, and then O'Shea at the back was rock solid um I th the first half for me felt quite flat i'll be honest with you i think it felt quite flat at times um didn't feel like the the attack versus attack on paper match it was built up to be um it didn't worry me for that but i think it gave me a bit of concern about the attacking nature of both these teams um Burnley really are struggling to score in this game. I, I could see it throughout the entire match. And for me, it felt like Burnley were really trying to try and make stuff happen. Uh, there were a couple of controversial calls. But to say that referee is 30 years old, I actually didn't think he, did, he didn't do a bad job, to be honest with you. Um, I give fair play to, to Sam. I think that's his name, Sam. 30 years old and he's he's better than some of the senior refs that I've seen, the older refs that I've seen. 
Um, I thought he did a fantastic job. I thought he did a really fantastic job. There's a couple of times where VAR could have got in his head and, you know, overruled the decision that he's made for a couple of very easy fouls. Um, there was a couple of really easy ones that could have been overturned as very, very harsh decisions. Um, but for me, I think Sam did a good job overall. Um Spurs fans may disagree, but I, I I think he did a good job. Um, for Spurs, like I said, I think their player of the match was obviously Paro. Uh, I think he's the exact type of fullback, wingback that works in an Ange Postacoglu system. I think that he's perfect um, because not only is he defensive minded, but also he's got the mind of an attacking defender. And I think in an Ange Postacoglu system, you need a tap minded defenders. Um, that are just as good at the back, but think attack mind. And I think you need that. And um, the main thing I'll say with Spurs is this. I think that for me, you've got to give this manager time. You know, even if you don't get top four this year, even if you don't win any trophies this year, give this man time because he could do serious things for you. But what I will say, and I've said this on the Football Terrace streams, and I've said this to other Spurs fans in the past, I don't have 100% confidence, in my personal opinion, unless something changes, that Daniel Levy and Enoch will back and Postacoglu 100%. I'm not saying they're going. They're not going to because everyone has a right to change. Everyone has uh, an opportunity to right wrongs because I know there was a lot of Spurs fans that did that really protest against the unit movement for a while. Daniel Levy for a while. Um, you know, you see this. You saw the protest a couple of years ago when the Super League first came out. That was a, uh, you know, Spurs came out uh, and did well with that. Um, alongside the other clubs involved. And for me, for me, it just feels like, you know, I I want to see the proof in the pudding before I start praising the Tottenham board and ownership because there is previous evidence of not spending big enough cash, if you get what I mean. Um, you know, I've got a gut feeling they're going to back this guy, but I don't want to put all the cards on the table at one time at the moment and say that they are going to. You want to hold your cards close to your chest, you know, like you're playing a, like you're playing a, a game of cards. You know, you want to hold your cards close to your chest and don't reveal them all at once. Otherwise, you show your true intentions on the table there and there. So, for Daniel Levy's sake and Enoch's sake, I hope they do back uh, Ange Postecoglou. I think that he's a wonderful manager to back. I think he's probably the best chance Tottenham have got to go and win silverware since they had Pochettino uh, a few years ago now. Um, so for me, this is their best chance of getting silverware, uh, in their trophy cabinet. And, um, you know, people make jokes all the time about the emptiness of the trophy cabinet at Tottenham and things like that. But, um, you know, Tottenham Hotspur, let's not take these guys as, you know, as mugs. You know, we've seen some wonderful players wear those Tottenham shirts. David Ginola, Jurgen Klinsmann, Paul Gascoigne, um, Teddy Sheringham, um, you know, so many wonderful, wonderful players. Um, led the king. I mean, the man who only has one knee. Come on, um, all the way. You know, all the way going back to to Bill's revolution when he took over as manager. Uh, if any of you older Tottenham fans can wind back to the history books, and I think it's Bill Nich I think his name Bill Nicholson um, to the original Spurs revolution, how it all started. Um, you know, Spurs have got a rich history with the FA Cup. You know, they've won multiple, multiple FA Cups throughout their time. And for me, I think Spurs need a competition like the FA Cup to draw their first piece of silverware under this manager. And postacoglu has got a history of winning trophies. So let's not write Postacoglu off as someone who's just going to take Spurs a bit further and then either walk, get sacked or leave. He's going to go far with this lot. It just takes that bit of investment and like I said, I just want to see the proof in the pudding first before I start putting all the cards on the table and saying, yes, Tottenham have changed from previous times. You know, we, we, we want to see Postacoglu backed. From a Burnley point of view, and yeah, I want to say something that I think Coventry mentioned in the second half, I think that promotion was maybe just a year too early for them. 
I think that this is a newer group of players. There's a lot of new players in there. They are getting used to each other a lot more. Uh, they're having to gel together quite quickly. And this is the Premier League as well. You know, Corbyn's brand of football is fantastic, don't get me wrong. But the thing is about Corbyn's brand of football is at the Premier League, you're going to have to ramp it up another level. You know, the pressing's going to be bigger. The pressing's going to be harder. It's going to be faster. The pace is quicker. Um, the quality of play you're dealing with is top echelon uh, for world football level. Uh, it's up there with the likes of La Liga, League One, um, you know, Bundesliga, you know, Saudi Arabia is climbing up there, but then they're, they're not there yet. There's a load of different football leagues that are the top echelon of, of quality of world football. And Premier League is, a, is part of that in terms of the quality of players they've got. So Burnley have to step it up a notch. And this season, they haven't really done that. Uh, there's been results where they could have got something, but they didn't. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. But for me with Burnley, if they defend like they did in this game here, I know they lost tonight and it must be gutting for them because something like the FA Cup could have really given their season a big boost. But for Burnley to move forward and to stay up in the Premier League this season, use the defensive traits they developed tonight at Tottenham because the way they developed and the way they defended as a unit sometimes, especially against some of those chances, and they really pressed Tottenham into working it backwards, sideways, into areas, taking extra touches. I could see what they were doing, and it, I, I felt it worked. I felt it worked to an extent for definite. So for me, I think Burnley have got a chance of staying up if they just use the defensive traits they use today, bring in a couple more signs that are going to give them that extra bit of quality, uh, that's going to keep them in the Premier League, bit of experience uh, with those younger lads. And Burnley could stay up this season. It's just a case of what they do in January in terms of the experience they bring in and also what they do defensively and how they develop their pressing, high football attacking nature uh, from here on out until the end of the season. That's what determines whether Burnley are going down or not. I know a lot of people have written them off already, but... The Premier League is used to dramas. We all remember that West Brom great escape uh, bottom at Christmas. Um, I think they were bottom of the table when they started as well. Um, and I mean, people don't remember that, but basically like all three relegation bases were up that year and um, and they ended up surviving. Uh, Jeff Horsfield coming off the bench and scoring, scoring one goal. I think he scored two goals, actually, one or two goals. Uh, and West Brom were up. Uh, stayed up on the last day of the season after being bottom at Christmas. That was the first team in the Premier League to ever do that uh, at the time. Brian Robson's baggies uh, that they were at the time. But um, but yeah, like I said, miracles have happened in the Premier League, and um, you know we've got to be got to be wary of that. And uh, we'll just see what happens because Sheffield United are trying to progress under Chris Wilder at the moment. Luton and Rob Edwards have had some harsh results, but I'll tell you something now. Luton have got it in them to stay up. I think there's a couple of sides above them that could slip if they're not careful. So we'll see what happens between now and the end of the season. But good luck to Burnley for the rest of the Premier League campaign. We'll try and follow a couple of more of their Premier League games, depending if they're on TNT Sports or not. Uh, but congratulations to Tottenham Hotspur, and Postacoglu, Daniel Levy, Enoch, the players, the fans, uh, for going through to round four of the FA Cup. We'll see who they face. Of course, Fulham, as we said earlier, through as well. Brentford Wolves have to go to a replay in the turn of Crystal Palace and Everton. We've got a bunch of FA Cup games coming tomorrow, uh, including our coverage of the Tyne and Weir derby between Sunderland and Newcastle. Uh, that kicks off around quarter to three, uh, sorry, quarter to one, sorry. Um, so, yeah, so that will be coming up around, uh, around uh, quarter to one. So stay tuned for that. Uh, on Sunday, we're going to be covering Shrewsbury against Wrexham, kicking off at two o'clock. Um, and then on the Monday, it will be straight after the Doncaster Rovers meet the owners event. I'll be coming straight home, ready to watch Wigan Athletic versus Manchester United in the FA Cup round three on the Monday night. And then on the Tuesday night, well, Tuesday evening, should we say, uh, we've got some basketball action. We've got... Uh, Hapwell Tel Aviv taking on the London Lions in the Euro Cup group stage. So a bit of basketball action for those of you who are basketball fans. If you're not a basketball fan and you have basketball mates, tell them to go and check it out. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but for now, guys, thank you very, very much for watching this video. Make sure you do like, comment, subscribe. And for now, guys, I am the C-H-A-L-L. Ta-ra for now.